Hello all, welcome back to Current Affairs Settler Series. I'm Guna Madhivanan from Offices IAS Academy. Friends, I'm coming up with an exclusive Current Affairs program targeting 2024 prelims as well as mains. Class starts from 21st October. Every Saturday at 5 p.m. we will be having online live session. I have given the information here. You can go through if you are interested. You can call to the number given here. Right. So today's topic is regarding GM crops. Genetically modified crops. Friends, in the previous video, I explained the difference between uh, DNA as well as gene. Please watch my previous video before watching this so that you will get complete clarity. What is DNA? What is gene? Okay. So I was explaining that DNA is a genetic material which contains information of life. It's a blueprint of our life that will have information. Now what is gene? Gene is a so gene is a specific portion of that DNA. Specific portion of the DNA is gene which has the most crucial informations. Okay, so that is gene. Now what is this genetic modification? Let me explain this genetic modification with an example, real example. See this cotton this cotton plant, they face attack from a worm called as pink ball worm. Pink ball worm. So that usually attacks the cotton plant and it damages the cotton in great quantity. So right, it puts the farmers un under distress. So to overcome this problem, globally, a lot of research was going on. However, an American company they came with a, a genetically modified cotton to prevent the cotton from these pink ball worm attack. So what that American company Monsanto, Bayer Monsanto, an American company, they came with this genetic modification. They created a new cotton variety. In that new cotton variety, they modified the genes of the cotton. So what did they do? So assume this is, this is the cotton DNA. This is the cotton DNA. So you know what they did. So they were doing a small genetic modification to the existing DNA. To the existing DNA, they were adding a new gene from a bacteria. So this bacteria is called as Bacillus thuringiensis. So assume this is the DNA of this Bacillus thuringiensis. So we removed one particular portion, we removed that particular portion of, we removed that particular portion of DNA. That is we took one important gene, actually we took two important genes. So what we did, that is what the American company did, they took the DNA of this bacillus thuringiensis. From the DNA, they took two important genes. They took two important genes, that is segments of DNA. The two important genes they added here, they added to the cotton's DNA. So we have cotton's DNA, right? And we have this bacteria's DNA. From this bacteria's DNA, a gene was removed and that gene was attached. That gene was attached to the cotton's DNA. So now what happened? This bacteria's characteristics now, this bacteria's characteristics now it entered into the cotton characteristics. So we took one particular gene of that bacteria, we added it to the cotton. By adding this, we were adding the characteristics of that bacteria to that cotton. What is that characteristic, sir? That characteristics makes the cotton to secrete some poison, some toxic substance. Now addition of assume I am that cotton, assume I am that cotton DNA, okay, some bacteria's gene is added to me. Now adding that gene to this cotton, that cotton has got an ability to secrete some poison. Okay, why that cotton should secrete the poison? When the poison in the, in the cotton is able to secrete that poison, then what happens is this pink bollworm will not come closer to cotton at all. Because now the cotton has the ability 
to produce some poison. So next time when that pink ball worm comes, next time when that pink ball worm comes, if I am the cotton, the pink ball worm comes, it will take a U-turn, it will go back because the cotton has some poisonous substance. Anyhow, we are not going to eat cotton, so it is not going to have a problem for us. But when the pink ball worm comes, now this cotton has that poison, so the pink ball worm will go and take a U-turn. Now, this is called as genetic modification. We took the genes of a bacteria and we added it to the DNA of the cotton and this is called as genetic modification and that cotton plant, that new cotton plant that is called as genetically modified cotton and that cotton is called as Bt cotton. That is called as Bt cotton. Bt here refers to that bacteria's name, Bacillus thuringiensis, right? Bacillus thuringiensis, that bacteria's name is what referred as Bt. So American company, they developed a new cotton seed. That cotton seed, if you grow, that cotton will be more stronger. It can withstand the attack from the pink bollworm. So cotton will be protected, farmers will be protected, farmers can uh, get more yield and they can make more money. Right? So can we grow? Idea is great. Idea is great. So can we buy that seeds and grow in India? Just like that we cannot do. So in India, we have Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee. This committee comes under Ministry of Environment. Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee that comes under Ministry of Environment. Right. So this GEAC will conduct field trials. So let us say if I want, if I am interested, if I am interested to grow that BT cotton in India, first thing this Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee, they have to give approval. So what they will do, they will conduct field trial, they will do all the necessary testing and then they will give approval. That approval is not sufficient. After this stage, Ministry of Environment, they have to give approval. Once they give approval, then this can be sown in India. Till date, this GEAC has approved BT cotton, BT brinjal, BT mustard. But however, Ministry of Environment has given, has given approval only for BT cotton. So they have not given approval for BT brinjal. So today you cannot grow BT brinjal or BT mustard in India. You can grow only BT cotton. Today the farmers in India, they are facing a problem. What is that problem, sir? BT cotton is allowed in India. So they are growing BT cotton, no problem. They are happily growing BT cotton. But there is a problem of weed. Weed refers to unwanted plant which is growing alongside with cotton plant. So I have cotton plants, but in between the cotton plants, I see some I see some unwanted small small plant growth. That unwanted plant growth is not good for the cotton plant. So what we can do? What we can do? So farmers can individually pluck that unwanted plants. Time consuming, labor intensive. So what farmers do is they will spray weedy side, they will spray herbicide. Okay, that one common herbicide which farmers will spray to kill the weeds, to kill the weeds that is called as Roundup. So Roundup is the brand name, the actual chemical name is glyphosate. Glyphosate is the actual herbicide or weedy side which the farmers will spray to kill that unwanted plants but the problem but the problem with this glyphosate the problem with this herbicide is so when they spray to kill the small plants the cotton is also getting affected for example just imagine so we are having some uh, mosquito repellent to kill the mosquitoes we switch on the repellent but by inhaling that repellent if we are also killed that is not good so to kill the unwanted plants, the farmers used to spray glyphosate but because of that the cotton was getting affected. So what does the farmers demand? The farmers, they started demanding that okay BT cotton is great, it has solved our problem. Now our cotton is protected from pink ballworm. 
But now they are asking some more stronger cotton. They are looking for, the farmers are looking for HTBT cotton. That is herbicide tolerant BT cotton. So farmers are requesting the uh, engineers, genetic engineers, that why don't you once again make this cotton stronger? You add some genes, take some bacteria, somehow do some genetic modification, make the existing BT cotton plant more powerful. How much powerful? Even after spraying herbicide, the cotton plant should not be killed. So the farmers started demanding HTBT cotton. So what farmers said, engineers do some more modification and come up with a new variety which can withstand the herbicides. So researchers, they came with HTBT cotton and you should know this HTBT cotton <coughs> is not approved by GEAC. It is not approved by GEAC. So we have this HTBT cotton seeds available in the world. But however, in India, we are not allowed to grow. But farmers are protesting that, no, no, government, please allow, government, please allow this HTBT cotton to be grown in India. Not just that, farmers are also protecting, uh, they, are, they are protesting, they are protesting for BT brinjal, BT mustard. Farmers are asking the government, government, you come, please allow us to grow BT brinjal, BT mustard. Why? Why farmers want BT brinjal? Why farmers want BT mustard? Don't think farmers are supporting genetic engineering. Don't think farmers are supporting genetic modification. It is not like that. See, this BT cotton definitely saved the farmers from the insect attack. Similarly, many insects, they attack brinjal, mustard. So farmers are definitely under the impression they will have that impression right when we grow bt cotton when we grow bt cotton we are protected from the insects so when we grow bt brinjal when we grow bt mustard so when we grow genetically modified crops it will prevent from the pest attack so farmers might find more utility in growing these genetically modified crops so today farmers are protesting if we go to the northwestern part of uh, our country Farmers are protesting, they are asking the government to allow grow, growing of BT mustard, BT brinjal and you won't believe illegally, even today illegally in the central part of India, northwestern part of India, illegally farmers are growing these genetically modified crops. As per Indian laws, holding, storing unapproved genetically modified seeds itself will invite you imprisonment. You can go to jail. But however, farmers are illegally growing it because it gives more returns. Right? So, what are the advantages of genetically growing genetically modified crops? What are the issues? Advantages is very clear. We can prevent the crops from pest attack. We can, um, you know, make more productive given the climate change. The water availability is coming down. We can um, modify in such a way that the plants can withstand the stress and, and we can make the uh, uh, crops more nutritious. Farmers can get additional income. We can ensure food security. We can ensure nutritional security. There are so many advantages, but also comes up with some threat. We are actually redesigning the nature. Nature has given a design. By genetic modification, we are redesigning it that can come up with unintended consequences we do not know. By changing the gene altogether, we are coming up with a new variety that can come up with unintended consequence we do not know. Right? Similarly, okay, today the cotton is protecting itself from pink bollworm attack. But tomorrow if a new worm comes, new insect comes, if that is going to attack the cotton, will the BT cotton withstand? We do not know. Will we go for once again a new genetic modification? That will be a costly process. The seeds will become costlier. When we eat that genetically modified product, today in India, thankfully, we are growing only BT cotton. But illegally, others are also being uh, grown. But still, predominantly, it's this BT cotton which we are growing. But assume that if we are eating genetically modified brinjal, mustard, etc., what will be the health impact? We do not know. Because we are eating a new species new variety, new species altogether. 
So there are some unintended consequences. Right? So there are benefits, there are issues. So here I have given uh, the information about the GM crops. You can go through, you can pause the video, make notes, right, about the regulations in India I have mentioned here. Benefits and drawbacks also I have mentioned here, you can go through. So based on our discussion, I have given a multiple choice question, find out the right answer and give it in the comment section. I hope this video was useful. So tomorrow I will come up with another important interesting hit list topic till then bye take care.